Listen, if you are a cinephile, if you hold Rosemary's Baby in high regard as a cinematic masterpiece, then this prequel, Apartment 7A, is likely going to disappoint you. Apartment A is currently streaming on Paramount Plus, and it came below my expectations, which I'll get into later. Now, this film stars the legend Diane Weist, along with Julia Garner and Kevin McNally. I liked half of the movie. I would have preferred a different movie than The Demon Baby or even a prequel to Rosemary's Baby because there is... I feel like a prequel to Rosemary's Baby would have been good, but this falls way below how great of a film that is. And I feel like if you can't meet the quality of that film, then do something else. That's what I feel. Rosemary's Baby, it was released in 1968, but you can look at it in 2024 and be transported to that time. We know so much now, and I think that affected this story so much because this is supposed to be a prequel. Director Natalie Erica James co-wrote this screenplay. I feel like it's from an omniscient standpoint. There are props that make you think it's taking place in 1968, but the story is told from a standpoint of someone who is living now and trying to tell or recapitulate a story from that era. And I don't think it works. Now, along with how the story is told, the cinematic quality doesn't work either because it feels and looks so digital, as in the texture of the film, the look of it, the aesthetic, looks so digital when this is supposed to predate 1968. And that's a huge problem. It took me out of the film because it doesn't even look, I couldn't be transported into that time because it's just so digitized. It looks so digital. There are props that make you think you're in the 60s with the cars and the set design, the interior shots of New York uh, apartments during that time. It wants to be that, but it kept making me drift away. It just felt too now. I am fascinated with the theme. Now, it takes me out when it gets all into the demon baby because it doesn't live up to Rosemary's baby, so they could have left that out for me. But I'm fascinated with the theme. Julia Garner plays a young dancer who has a career-ending injury. And what's posed to her is, what are you willing to do for fame? Are you willing to sell your soul to achieve fame? I am fascinated with that as a theme. And that's the part of the story that I was really drawn to. It gets into the demon baby and all of that. That took me out of it. I wish it would have focused on that um, because that is fascinating to me. That gets to the core of who we are as human beings and the decisions we make, how that shifts our life and the trajectory of even our careers, those decisions that we labor over. And I like when that's posed to people. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to sacrifice your soul, everything you believe in, the core of your being, just for fame? And fame is so transient and so it doesn't last, but just for an iota of fame, how far are you willing to go? Love that. So she is a dancer, she's talented, but she is told no. And she is, she's trying to prove to them that she may not be as good as she needs to be, but she's willing to do anything and everything to get there. I was fascinated with that. And I think Julia Garner taps into that part of the story really well. Now, I liked her performance there, but a lot of uh, Julia Garner's facial expression seem plastered on. In this film, a lot of her character is challenged and she has to give up so much of her soul. And I just felt like, her eyes were vacant in a lot of the scenes that required a lot more emotionality, not overacting, but I just feel like there wasn't a deep dive in scenes that required it. Maybe she needed to look like she wasn't good enough. Maybe that was the point, but it just felt like a steely performance that didn't show the vulnerability, I think, someone in this position would go.
it didn't seem that deep. It seemed a little surfacey to me. And as she is a good actress, so don't get me wrong. So that took me out of it. So she is a young dancer in a play, has a career ending injury, is on the road to healing, stalks really <laughs> the director or casting director of this play, stalks him to see the other side of this life. She stalks him home. He's living in this beautiful pre-war building in Manhattan and tries to get entry into that life. I think that's what this scene is painting. She wants entry into this life and lifestyle. And she's basically thrown out of the building, injures herself again, um, vomits and that little bit, and is found by Diane Wee's character and Kevin McNally's character. And they take her up to the apartment, they let her get some rest, and then offers her one of the apartments, apartment 7A, where she can live rent-free. That is how they lure her into this life. And she is offered a way in, entry into this life. And how far is she going to go to maintain it? That's the movie I was more interested in than her being impregnated with a demon baby. And even when it gets there, which takes place mostly really in the third act, especially as a prequel, and for it to want to live up to the regard that Rosemary's Baby is held in, it just plummets from there when it tries to live up to that. It took me out. I liked some of the movie, but by the time you look at the cinematography and get into the second half of the story, it just was a little frustrating. Listen, it's, you don't have to go to the theater. It's right there on Paramount+. Plus. I didn't like it. I don't recommend it, but it's not the worst movie that came out this year. There's enough good story in the film to give it a chance, but by the time you get to the third, you may not be interested anymore. At any rate, Apartment 7A is currently streaming on Paramount+. Plus.